Hello Bridgewater College Education 370 students. In this screencast we're going to learn how to set up a grade book for a teacher who chooses to grade on a percentage basis. For example in the class that we have here this teacher has quizzes, tests, homework, and participation and every grade is based on a hundred point system. That is um, every grade is, is 0 through 100. Now what we want to do is to now assign the correct percentages to these based on the teacher's grading policy. This teacher's grading policy is that she's going to count the quizzes worth 20 percent. She's going to count the test worth 60 percent. She's going to count the homework at 10 percent and the class participation at 10 percent. And of course that should make 100 percent for the grades. So let's see how to do this. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to add a column for quiz average. That average is going to go but here after quiz 5. So I'm going to click actually on column G which is test 1 and I'm going to right click and say insert. And when I do it created a column for me to put quiz average here. So I'm going to put quiz AVG. Likewise I need to have a column for test average and to the way to do that is to go beyond your last test over here to column J, right click, insert, and now I can put test AVG. I'll do the same for homework. So I'll right click on the, uh, I'll click on column M, right click, and say insert, and this will be the homework average. I don't need to do that for participation because I'm assuming that there's only one participation grade, but if I had multiple participation grades, I could certainly do that as well here. The next thing I, I notice is that my gradebook doesn't look very neat. Uh, I've got names chopped off, I've got some things right justified, some things left justified, so let me take a minute and make things look a little bit neater. Uh, to do that, I'm going to bold face row 1. Anytime you want something to apply to the whole row, you know to click on the number to the left, 1 in this case, and then I'll click boldface. Next, I want to uh, center all the grades. So how about if I highlight column B, C, D all the way through, actually I'm going to highlight all the way through uh, O because I am going to have a final grade here in, in a little bit in column O. So I'll highlight all of those and click on the center icon and now that centers everything. So things are starting to look better. Uh, column A isn't wide enough. I can't see all the students names. So put your cursor between the A and B and drag to the right and now we can see all their names. So now it looks a little bit nicer and we're ready to um, begin calculating some grades. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the first student's average and then we're going to copy that formula for the remaining students. Um, oops, before I do that I notice that the, my names aren't alphabetized. So let's do that. And here's a handy trick for alphabetizing grades. Uh, I'm going to click on the first row on number one and I'm going to go up to the column that says data and then filter. What that does is it produces little arrows for each column now that will enable me to sort. So if I now come to the name column and select A to Z, it alphabetizes my students and of course also keeps the correct grades with the correct students. Uh, this is handy when I want to see um, maybe the grades sorted from high to low on a particular test. Um, I'll come over here to the first test, I'll click on the arrow key and I'll say sort these from largest to smallest and now it sorts them from the highest grade to the lowest grade. I'll go back and alphabetize now, back to column um, A, and I'll sort them from A to Z. And now we're set and ready to enter our averages. We'll calculate Betsy's quiz average first. So I'll click here, which is where her quiz average would go, and I'm going to use an Excel formula. I'm going to type equal, and then I start typing average, and as soon as I do it pops up a drop down. I'm going to say average. So I double click that. I have to tell it what I want average, so I'll just highlight the quizzes. So I'm highlighting from B through F. Those are the quizzes. All I have to do is to put a closing parenthesis and hit the enter key, and it has done so. It has averaged her quizzes. 
I'm going to now copy this for the other four students. The way to do that is to put your cursor in the lower right hand corner. It switches to a plus sign and then I'll pull down and indeed it um, computes their average as well. When I do this I notice that the format of these is such that some folks don't have a decimal point, some do, and maybe I'd like for this to all look the same. So what I'll do now is click on the G, right click, format cells, number, and I want there to be only one decimal place, let's say, for everybody, and indeed now they all have exactly one decimal place. I like that format for the quiz average. Let's go over to test average and we'll do the same thing. Um, again, I'm going to fix Betsy's test average and copy it for the other four students. So I type equal, average, I can just type the whole word average if I want to, left parentheses, highlight all the tests, which in my case are just ones here, close parentheses, and now Betsy's average is shown here. I'll grab the right hand side and pull down and it does the uh, averaging now for all of the students. Uh, here's a, another trick you can use uh, for formatting. If you've already fixed one cell the way you want other cells to be, you can go to the cell that's formatted the way you want it to, go to your home screen, and on the home screen there's a little uh, paintbrush here called Format Painter. If you double click that Format Painter, and then drag it will highlight it will format all of the numbers that you have selected um, based on the first one that you use as the the model when you're done just simply click on the format painter again and we're ready to move on let's do homework average the same way so I'll, again I'm gonna set Betsy's equal and I could start typing the word average or I could just double click here I need to say Columns K and L are what I want you to average. Close parenthesis. And now it's got Betsy's average calculated correctly. I'll drag down. Once again, if I want to fix the formatting here, there's two ways to do it. One is simply to do what I did before. Right click. Format cells. Number. One decimal place. Or I could use that trick of copying the format from one cell to others. Well now I have the individual averages set up properly now we have to do the overall average so I'm just going to put a uh, final as my column heading here because this will be the overall average for the grading period for the student. So here's where we have to include the fact that th these are weighted differently. Um, I'm going to type equal. Now remember that we said her quizzes are going to count 20 percent so I'm going to go to quiz average and I'm going to multiply that that's the asterisk times 0 0.2 plus I'm going to go to the test average which is right here and that's going to be times 0 0.6 because she's weighting this 60 percent time or plus of the homework average and the homework as you recall was going to be worth 10% uh, 0 0.1 and then finally the participation grade which is going to be column in 2 times 0 0.1 at this point I think I've got it all set up right looks like Betsy's got a 97 average and that average is based on counting her quiz average at 20%, her test average at 60%, her homework average at 10%, and her class participation grade at 10% also. I've got her formula fixed correctly, so now let's copy that for the other four students. I get the decimal points that I'm not particularly happy with, so let's use that trick again of going to a cell that's formatted correctly. Click, Double click on the paintbrush highlight and then click on the paintbrush again and now I have the grades uh, successfully averaged. You might notice here that Henry is missing a homework grade and the question is has it counted that as a zero 
or has it simply skipped it? Well, if you look at his homework average, you'll see that it simply skipped it. It didn't count it as a zero. If your policy is to have missing homework count as zeros, then you would need to type in a zero here for Henry. I'll do that now so that his quiz average then correctly reflects the missing grade. But the Excel doesn't know that that's your policy, so you have to make sure that the Excel formulas you set up match the grading policy for your class. Okay, I think we're done. I think our uh, class looks good now. One more thing we're going to do in the next screencast is to learn how to have Excel look at these grades and decide which is an A, which is a B, and, and so forth, and actually put that grade over here in the next column. See you then.